Today's lesson is about author and illustrator Beatrix Potter. Most of you know Ms. Potter as the writer and illustrator for the famous children's books, The Tale of Peter Rabbit, and other books, including The Adventures of Benjamin and Peter, as well as Jemima Puddle Duck, and some wonderful other animal characters. Miss Potter began these stories in letters to children in her family who were ill. But long before she wrote these books, she had a love of nature and would often go out in the Scottish and English countryside and draw the plants and animals she found there. She was particularly interested in mycology, which is the study of fungus. She made microscopic drawings of fungus spores and developed a theory about their germination and development. Follow along with me as I draw one of my favorite woodland creatures, a flying squirrel. So for today's Beatrix Potter lesson, I would like to illustrate a favorite forest animal of mine, which is the southern flying squirrel. They are really cute. They have these huge eyes that are just really cute and appealing and they're kind of very rare to see in this area. So I just thought he'd be a good character for us to do. You might choose to do your dog or cat, a regular squirrel or a rabbit like Peter Rabbit. One thing to do to keep in mind when you're planning your little sketch is that in the Peter Rabbit books, Beatrix Potter anthropomorphized the animals. That's a big word that means she gave them characters like people would have. So instead of a squirrel standing flat on a tree or laying on the ground or on all fours, she would depict them upright with their paws up more like a human would stand. So I found an image of a flying squirrel where it's standing up on its back two feet and it's eating some nuts or seeds or something. So here's how I'm going to draw my flying squirrel. I'm using a Sharpie so that you can see my drawing better, but you might want to use a pencil to start with, or you could use a Sharpie too, or even a black marker, oil pastel, or crayon. I'm going to add color today with some watercolor pencils and then a brush with water. Another way you can do that if you don't have watercolor pencils is just some washable markers and you can use a brush with plain water on top of the washable markers and it will create a painting effect similar to watercolor pencils. So I'm going to look at my flying squirrel and kind of generalize his shapes. So his body starts with kind of an egg shape, okay? And so I'm going to draw much of that with my um, Sharpie and then his leg comes down about like this and he's got his little paws here and his other paws. Now his tail is not as big and fluffy as a regular squirrel might be so it's a little bit thinner or flatter I'm going to make his little front shoulder here and there's a line that goes down his side where the flap of extra skin is that lets them fly and glide really is what they're doing. So here is the top of his arm and his little paws that look a lot like human hands there. And last but not least, I'm going to make his head, which is another kind of an egg shape. So here's his head. He's got some ears that stick out a good bit. If I were using a pencil, I would erase that part, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. And down to his little mouth. And the flying squirrel has a really large eye. I would say it's about a fifth the size of its head. So I'm going to draw that large dark eye right here. And there's some fur details, almost like he's wearing some eyeliner. This line I spoke of down his side 
is kind of a black line. So I'm going to add that with my Sharpie so it stays dark. I might add a few other little furry details here and give him kind of a nose here on the top of his head and some details in and around those ears. And then I want to leave a highlight, a white space in his eye, makes it really come to life. And the rest of his eye, I'm going to color in black. And there is the basic sketch for my very cute little flying squirrel. So I might go ahead and draw some ground behind him. Maybe I'll put some plants or grasses here as if he's on the ground. And let's make a bit of his other paw here and his fur. And I think I'm finished with my sketch. So the next step is to add some color. So here I have my watercolor pencils. I'm going to take out the colors that I see most in his fur. Being careful not to let these fall off of the table as you're working. Okay, I think that's good. I've got some browns, some gray, and black here. So I'm going to start coloring um, from my reference photograph, coloring his fur. I like to pay attention to the direction that his fur is kind of growing in when I make my pencil marks. So go ahead and color as much as you want. And the trick we're going to use with the water in a few minutes means that you don't have to color the whole thing solidly. Beatrix Potter's illustrations were very soft and um, so we're going to kind of go for that feeling as well. So I'm doing most of his fur kind of a medium gray. Darker in some areas than others. And his underbelly is more cream, so we'll leave that cream. Uh, kind of a white color with some light brown. So now I'm going over my watercolor pencils with just plain water in a cup and a brush. You might have a really nice um, tool called a water brush, which is a special brush that holds water inside the barrel. But a regular cup of water will work just fine. And I'm lightly blending in where I colored with my colored pencil. I want some of the fur texture to show through. So I'm not going to scrub too much. I'm going to be very gentle with my brush strokes to keep some of that fur texture and I might even skip going over some sections of my flying squirrel's body to keep that fur texture. Very light here on his white cream colored belly. And if I go back with more water, it can lift some of that paint pigment if I got too dark anywhere. And I'm going to paint these little seams a little bit, just a touch. I think I'll do a little bit of here behind my squirrel.
Now, if you were working with um, water-based markers, you would do something very simple, similar to what we did with the um, watercolor pencils. You will color and draw with your water-based marker, and then you can take straight up water and blend it to get more of a painted effect. Very similar to the way the watercolor pencils react, um, just with regular washable water-based markers. So there we have our Beatrix Potter inspired animal illustration. I can't wait to see what you create. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and do consider becoming a member of Brahm.